Yeah, it's definitely a good study. Definitely a good study, but we get back on um here and we'll wait for a couple more people to join back in. Amen. We definitely want to give everybody a chance to elaborate on this and um give their um insight that the Lord gives them for us. Wait another second and then we'll get started. Anybody anybody else want to elaborate on that? Brother T wait for him to anybody. Amen. Oh yeah, amen, amen, man. Look, the best teachings. The best teachings to get close to God is in Bible study. Mm. You know, you know how he said, like in front of church, you know, mm -hmm. I, I understand church, you know what I mean? And I do, I like church, but the understanding me getting closer to God was through Bible study. Mm -hmm. Having Bible education is really important. Mm -hmm. Without Bible education, man, you can't, you don't know God. You can't, you might say you. You know God, but without Bible education, you don't know. You gotta have that Bible education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta have somebody that's teaching it, willing to break it down for you to explain it the way you just did. Mm -hmm. Most of when you go to church today, you ain't getting that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm gonna say this over and over again. Uh, we get, we can all fate to. Uh, to go to church and, and I'm not calling nobody out. I'm not, I'm not criticizing nobody. I hope nobody don't take this the wrong way, but it's fine to flip scriptures in a Bible and read along. But unless you can ask your pastor or whoever that man mm -hmm. and that first lady of that church is to give you that word and give you true understanding of what you're reading, right. it means absolutely nothing. Right. You're worse than a follower out here in the streets. Mm. Yeah. And no, you're no better. You're no better. You're no better next Sunday when you go to church. Right. At that big church house. You're no better with your understanding of what you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any more sense to you. Right. I'm not. God created nothing but kings and queens on this earth. We was never supposed to be here to suffer, be servants or peasants. He's given us, he, he blessed all of us with free will and what we're doing right now. But there's only a few people. And I'm going to keep calling you pastor and your wife, first lady, because it's going to be that. And it's going to be the true thing. It's not going to, that's going to be far and few what we have right now going on. Brother Roy, I want to or it's got to be a reason for it because I fell off a couple of weeks due to my hard times, certain life situations. My son, gave, the devil gave me every reason to be at football practice. And I ain't going to say the devil, like, it's all bad. I'm doing positive things. My son is doing travel football. But guess what? I was doing too much attending every Tuesday, every Sunday morning, where he threw something out there in front of me where I couldn't figure out how to say, hey, throw the headphones on, be on the sideline, even if y'all hear the whistles in the background. Mm -hmm. Gave me an excuse, right? I'm calling myself out. I don't need nobody else to do it. But I know what it is. The devil knows that it's too much power in what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm right back. And I'm going to try my very best. And like I always say, I pray that I know this little group that we in going to pray for uh, little Roy that nobody don't know over and over again. And it's going to be different for me and my family and your family as well. Amen. Which is, I wanted to just say this because I don't want us to get off focus that we definitely want to be able to teach each other. We definitely want to be able to see what God's doing in our life. But I want you men to know that don't look at us any other than man. Do you hear me? And woman, because 
just because God is, is working in all of our lives to edify and build each other, don't put no title on us. We're men and women just like you guys, and we want to be able to help each other in God's word. And when God does tremendous things with building you guys up as well, we're going to be learning from you because I'm going to be asking you all kinds of questions. I want you to know that. <laughs> And yeah. that's how it works. <laughs> let, us, let us jump back in here so we don't get too far off. Now, the servant now is down at Nahor's house in Mesopotamia, right here in Genesis 24, 13 through 15. Let us look and see what he does when he get here and how prayer, God answers his prayer. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw water and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. He's talking about Abraham. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out who was born of Bethuel son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher on her shoulders. And I'm going to start right here at 24, 19 through 21. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondered at her and held his peace to with whether the Lord has made his journey prosperous or not. Now, when you go back and you look at this in the spirit, what this man just got to the well and prayed, Rebecca came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. And the same prayer that he prayed for her to give him some water, she did that. And guess what she also did? Went and drew water for his camel. To the point that this man had to wonder that did God bless his journey because she just performed what he just prayed for at the well. You Amen. Can't tell me, yeah. the power of God ain't in prayer. Whoa. You can't yep. tell me that the power <laughs> of God is not in prayer. This man just got to the well and prayed for Rebecca to come out and have her pitcher on her shoulders, let it down and give him some water and oh. all draw water for his camels also. And she did that very thing that he prayed. So though he had faithfulness and he was obedient. Mm. Amen. Yeah. And the man he wondering obedient. at her held his peace to with whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. You know how when God performs yeah. something and you question it like, ooh, Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, is that it? Man. No. Not like yeah. that. That's the ornament. Yeah. That's the ornament. Can a bride forget her ornament? Can I heard it someone... her attire? Hey Amen. Sorry about that, honey. Go ahead. No, that's okay. And I was saying, I heard someone say, and this is very key. I heard someone now just say, faithfulness and obedience. Mm. And that does the make the difference. <laughs> Well, you know, and I think of, about that scripture that says, seek God in his kingdom mm -hmm. and his and righteousness, all. and then everything mm -hmm. else will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. And I am a witness that is surely true. When you, I mean, you, not, you have to do more than just say you trust in God. Right. But I mean that you're really trusting God. And when you're really trusting God, that means you're not worrying about it. And I'm talking right now, I'm going to be a little bit more specific. I'm talking about that mate. You have so many men and women, you know, some men are looking for a good wife, some sisters that ain't been married, you know, they're praying and asking God to send them a, a, a man of God or a husband in their life. Right. But my thing is when we are really walking in faith and we trust in God, that's not something we even have to worry about. We ain't got to sit up and keep worrying and stressing about it. When my wife coming, when my husband coming, because you know what, while you're, while you're waiting, there's a difference because while you're waiting, there's things that you need to be doing. You need to still be working. You need to still be doing the things that God called you to do in your life. You know, you need yes. to still be working on you, woman. You still need to be working yes. on you, man, so that when yes. that comes, you're ready for them. Right. So the yes. thing is, that's what you call 
really trusting and waiting in God. Lord, I don't care how long I gotta wait. I don't care what I trust in you in this area of my life. I know that you've been there for me. I know that you know me better than I know myself. I know that you know who's perfect for me. And Lord, I'm going to trust you fully. I don't care if I'm going to wait 10, 15 years from now. I'm 65 and I'm only 40 now. But you know what? I know that if it comes from you, it's going to truly be for me. And you know what? I said that prayer. Like I am a witness that God mm -hmm. will do it. But when you mean it from your heart or when you're faithful, you ain't got to keep up on it. Or you ain't you keep doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. If you're a single woman, keep doing the things that God called you to do. You know, keep 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 doing what you're doing, man. Keep, you know, I know it can be lonely sometimes, but you know what? There's a lot of stuff for us to be doing while we're waiting now. We mm -hmm. We got to work on ourselves. There's things we need to be doing. We need to be strengthening ourselves spiritually. You know, there's things that we, 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 some women, you know, you need to learn how to keep your house maybe a little better. There's something mm. that you could be doing. Maybe he called you to the ministry and you're supposed to be down there at the uh, adult family home taking care of senior citizens. Work on what he's giving you to do. Right. Your husband might be down there at the family um, adult. Right. <laughs> you know, he might right. be down you don't know. Like the thing is, we don't have time to sit up and worry about it because we trust in God and we know in our timing and when he sends that person, it's mm -hmm. going to be the exact thing for you. You ain't got to be trying to, uh, mm -hmm. what you call that, covet what somebody else got. You ain't got mm -hmm. to be jealous of nobody. You mm -hmm. ain't got to do none of that because what God has for you is for you. Mm -hmm. And when he gives it to you, honey, you're going to have that thing until you leave here. Mm -hmm. Praise God. <laughs> Yeah, and you pray for it. You pray for it. It's going to come. You know, it may not come when you want to, but it will come. It will come. You know, I, that's what we talked about last week. What, was it Rebel? Mm -hmm. uh, no, Sarah, Abraham. A oh, yeah, Abraham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, look, look, we got things to look at here. God has given us plenty. Not only will he make our enemies to be at peace with us, he will also give us long life. Look at Abraham and Sarah. He extended their life expectancy and gave them Isaac, the promised child, at their old age. Look how the Lord to keep that romance going. Look how the Lord. Look how the Lord does things. The Lord has the ability to add to us, not take away from us. Add to us. Add to us. But yeah. if you're not trying to know Him, the enemy's going to take away from you. And he's been showing that and proving that to us. But just like the Lord was just telling us in this verse that he's been with us. Have he been a wilderness to us in a land of darkness? This world is dark. He hasn't left us. If he did, we would have got shot by that bullet that grazed us or that did hit us, but we still lived. Or that the drugs that we smoked that could have bust our heart and that did bust our heart, but we still lived. He said, he ain't left us, but my people have left me without number, without days. Can't even count them. Mm. Mm -mm. Hey, you know, another thing we have to really also take in consideration is that before we get to this point, the devil already know who we are. So mm -hmm. he's really working to stop us from getting to this point. Mm -hmm. We have to stay aware. Amen. That's true. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I have a question. Break break down for me who Rebecca is the daughter of. Because the way this is worded, I get that she was born to Beth Ewell, um, son of Malchai. Micaiah. but then when it says <laughs> the wife of Nahor, right. Abraham's brother, what what yeah. does that part mean? Remember, in here, we're just drawing out what the scripture is. And see, this is what a lot of people don't know how to do, um, Sister Lindy, as they don't know how yeah. to bring that time up until now. That time in there, they did incest. Remember when, when, oh, Abraham, yeah, 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 when, when yeah, Abraham yeah. And, and Sarah got down to Egypt, and, and the, the Egypt Pharaoh was trying to get her 
she really was his sister. He didn't lie when he said that. Okay. That's how they did it. They didn't have the same dad, but they had the same mother. And that's just how they did that there. But when I got to this and I read this, it showed me how Nahor, how they had, I mean, Beth Ewell, but Beth Ewell and was the son of Milka. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So somehow, but, somehow some incest happened in there. Well, that's what I kind of was, was Rebecca. thinking. Well, you know, with Rebecca. I, with Rebecca. Right. Right. Or Rebecca. Or, you know, to bring her yeah. here. But it's kind of, yeah. It's kind of there's much fruit in here to dig out, so I just I just kept it going because that wasn't for me today. That stuff that they were yeah. doing. The point of that to me was to keep it in faith. Oh yeah, definitely yeah, and and the the I I love what Sister Michelle said when um see because when we continue after we pray and we continue to do God's will, we continue to do His purpose for us. Um, that just shows faith, faith yeah. that you have in God, that he's going to provide for you, your mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, but I just got confused when I read that part about the wife of Ahura, and I, I just didn't get that. Right, right. And it's a, it's a lot in the word, and in the word, we just get the point, and that's yeah. That's why the books has been taken out. And I'll be telling people, man doesn't have the power to take anything out. No. If you know God, you know that he's all, he's He's everything. He knows all, he sees all, and he's allow all. And allow, right. man can't take anything out the Bible, the 66 books. And whenever you run across something, that you get the point of that. And no, just like the archers. And I forgot that book. I think it was Jasher or something that they mentioned that when Saul and them got killed in, on Mount Gilboa and it showed what the archers was. They learned how to arch. Take that and run mm -hmm. from it. That's what they learned. They learned how to shoot the arrow. You don't go find right. the book and then getting all into that because I got the point of what that was. And I keep right. it wrong. Right. Yeah, I get it. Okay, thank you. And, uh, anybody else? Got anything they want to add on to that? We see power. Well, I want to say that... Uh... By being every every Tuesday and and when Sundays come, I learn a lot, you know, through uh, we having discussion, you know, with the Bible, yeah. with dear bring to us. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yep. Learning. It is. Amen. This Praise is God. God. Yeah, just just like the bride. That I mean, oh. Mm. That is, you know. Yeah, it hits different, don't it? Yeah, sorry. So in other words, I get out of that. Is the Lord telling us, how you going to run out? You didn't make this world. This is what the Lord spoke to me in that. How you going to run out there in this life just because it looked good and forget me? <laughs> you don't know what's laid out there. You don't know the tracks that's set out there. But you're going to forget me and run out there. And that's exactly what happened. As people are running out there after these buildings, that's not giving them the proper training and teaching the word. They saying a little piece of word, but telling you the rest about gifts and about them, that don't wash. The word washes, what we're doing now. So you can learn that. Look at this man. He got there and prayed. And guess what? His prayer got answered by obedience and faith. Look at, he was a servant, but he was faithful to Abraham, his master. When you get on these jobs, you be faithful to who you serving. Mm -hmm. You don't talk behind their back. God's yep. watching you. Mm -hmm. And I told you the other right day, came out of his pocket and gave yeah, you the yeah, man on that. Said, yeah. Thank you for every time I ask you to do something, you do it. Ooh, they hear funny. God made him give me that. You hear me? Wow. Ain't nobody handing out no money on job sites. God made nah, him give me that. That's right. I'm just saying, it gets bigger than that. God will make yeah. men give unto our bosom, remember? He's all wrong. Go ahead. I think, I think the one thing we, um, and it's just, you know, understanding and knowing, that comes with understanding and knowing who we are. Mm -hmm. As disciples, we're servants. Right. I was just reading that in the word, just as Jesus was. He said he, he came to serve, not to be served. Right. 
So we should have a servant spirit. And that goes whether, like you were saying, being humble, being a servant, willing to willing to do what other sometimes other people won't do mm. because they feel like it's too um, low for them. Right. right? So um, whether that's cleaning a bathroom, you know, I'll volunteer, I'll do it, you know? So the thing about that is that's what that kind of goes to. That's what I thought about is being a servant. When you're on your job, you're a servant. You get, you're getting paid to do a job and you're a servant to do the best job you can do, you know? And um, that that's in our life. We're in our life, you know, to be, to serve others. What can we do for you? How can I help you? But we live in a culture and a society. It's about, hmm, I ain't doing that. You ain't did nothing for me. And I ain't doing that for you. And, and or waiting for somebody else to do something for you before you can uh, show them any kindness. You know, that's the world that we live in. But if anyone that says they're a believer, if they're behaving in that way or acting in that way, then that's a check because that's something that we're not supposed to be. It clearly says in the word and Jesus said he he did not come to serve, but he came to serve others. So we should have that type of heart and spirit. And if we don't, we need to pray on it and we need to work on it. Amen. You said it. Yeah, you got to watch that. That's his cold spirit. That's out here now that everybody want to be in control. Everybody want to be the boss. But for they forget that the boss came and was a servant. So if we have taken on his nature and his spirit, guess what? We're going to be that same thing. We're going to be serving because this is not our system. Through the weeks, we're going to start getting into some more word. The Lord been giving me through the months, through the years, through the days. And we're going to start looking at this from scripture. How this demonic education, this demonic world. And the reason why it's demonic, the education, because it's about putting the title by your name and exalting yourself. Right. Your your um thing is on mute. I can't hear you. That's good. Say one more thing, and then I'm not gonna say nothing yeah. else. I, and it's about being a servant because I like to be. We have to be realistic, and I, I'm I'm I consider myself to be very much a realist. And I just want to say this before we close out is I do understand that sometimes. It can be hard being a servant mm. and I, we need to, we need to be realistic about what we're facing in our practical lives. Sometimes it can be hard, especially if you're working for someone or dealing with someone that is very harsh, that is, can be, that's maybe mean spirited, maybe not the nicest person, but still you're called to still be show kindness and be a mm -hmm. servant. That can be difficult. Sometimes I think about, um, you know, when we look in the world, talking about the servant, where some of the servants, you know, they have masters, they were working under their masters and just think um, having that servant spirit to where even though someone's treating you bad or mistreating you or treating you dirty and you still come along, kind of remind you of slavery time. Yes, master. Yes. What can I do for you? Can I shine your shoes? Oh, right. can, master, can I take that for you? It's hard to have that type of spirit when someone's mistreating you or hurt at you right. or being just crude and, and rude and, and, and mean and right. evil. So I just wanted to put that out there um, that I do understand right. and we can talk, we're having a conversation, but we have to be realistic. And when those difficult times come, we all face those difficult times, but let's pray about it. Lord, help mm. me. I need your help mm. right now. I need to be humble. Help me to be that right. servant. You called me to be, we have to call out because sometimes people are more difficult to deal with than others. So right. I just wanted to put that out there. Amen. Yeah. God said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when we're weak and going through things is a Amen. chance for the Lord to build in us. Amen. People don't understand this, that when the Israelites were led out of Egypt, the Lord said, I could have took you the back way. You hear me? Through Canaan to the promised land. But you had some things in the wilderness you had to work out. Now, while we're going through the wilderness, if you're not working for somebody that's challenging your character to build, but you're taking the easy way out through the enemy and getting all of this money. So now you feel like you can do anything. You don't have to build your character. We better watch out for that because the Lord is allowing us to go through the process of the wilderness to work some things out. And if you haven't went through the process because you picked up the riches of the enemy and you allow for your character not to get worked on, you miss the process. That's why you get into the days of gathering all the food on the sixth day. And on the seventh day, you didn't gather. See, you waited on the Lord to provide for you. You didn't go out there and get greedy and let master give you $50 million 
Now you're drinking and smoking and talking to people crazy because you're a millionaire. Let's be careful of that. There's things in the word that talk about that. Many have pierced them hearts for riches. Truly godly contentment is to be content with whatever you got. That's true contentment. So let us not miss that process. It's very crucial. Very crucial. So we ask if you have not given your life to the Lord, the Romans 10, 9. If you confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God the Father raised Jesus on the third day, thou shalt be saved. When you make that confession in your heart, a, a good preacher that's really sent from God, who heard God's voice, because God said, my sheep hear my voice. At John 3, 5, and 6, our master told us, man cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless he's been born by water and by spirit. So when you make that confession in your heart, go and get baptized. Amen. And the gift of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. It will. You just continue to be adamant, continue to put things down, continue to fellowship, continue to allow this word to wash you. And when the Lord, you know, as you keep continuing to knock, he said the door will open. And when it opens, man, beautiful blessing on the other side. Amen. Anybody, anybody? Last word? Go ahead and pray us out, Brother Dewan. Bless you to you, sir. Did anybody have any last comments or anything they'd like to share before we close out? No? Okay. I think y'all covered it good. Y'all did good. Thank you for the calculation, sir. <clears throat> All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Father God, we'd like to thank you, Father, for allowing us to come together tonight, Father God. Understand, understanding your word, Lord. Lord, we ask you that you continue working in our lives for the greater of your will, Father. Keep your unchanging hand placed upon us. Continue guiding us, Father, however you see fit, Lord. We're nothing without you, Lord. We ask you for whoever we come against, Father, that we don't mislead, misguide, or cause any harm to them, Father God. Yes. We thank you, Father, for everything that you placed upon our life. In your son, Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you guys for another good blessings on this day. God yes. Amen. The rest Amen. of the weekend. Amen. God bless Amen. you all. Yeah. God bless yeah, everyone. Great. Name is Lady. All right. It's beautiful. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Take care. Good. All right. Good to see everybody tonight. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Lord. Thank you, Michelle, Thank you. and everybody. T. Dwayne. Man. God bless everybody. You. Yes, see y'all Sunday. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs>